Hello friends, it's Candace and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be telling you exactly what you need to know to see if you have a sweet spot. Now, I don't want you to use this video as a way to have a guide to pierce your own nose. It's simply for the people who are like, do I even have a sweet spot? You're wondering if you could even get a septum piercing. Maybe you have a deviated septum and you're like, is it all just hard cartilage in there? Some people don't have any sweet spot. Some people have like really tiny sweet spot. Some people have loads of room in their sweet spot. Everyone's different. So this is just my simple way that I know how to discover if you have a sweet spot and how it feels in your nose. So you may be wondering, what is a septum piercing? Basically, you see my little mustache here? It's going through a septum piercing. This is a large septum piercing, so that's why I'm able to fit multiple rings. Basically, a septum piercing is a piercing that goes through the cartilage in the middle of your nose. Now, there is quite a bit of misinformation out there regarding septum piercings. A lot of people don't even know where it's supposed to go at all. They just think if it's here at all, that's good. It's a septum piercing. And that's just not the case. The proper placement for a septum piercing is actually called high and tight, which is, if you can see up here, this is going through the tip of my nose. It's all the way in the front. And that's not just because it's a bigger gauge septum piercing. This is like the general area of where you want your septum piercing to go, like right up. We're sticking our fingers in our noses today, people. You wanna go right up to the tip. This is where your septum piercing should be, the tip. Not this mound of tissue here. Man, I should've taken my jewelry out. It's not through this thick bottom piece of cartilage. It is through a thin piece of cartilage at the very tip of your nose that is fondly referred to in the piercing community as the sweet spot. Oh my gosh, I gotta see if I got boogers. No boogers, we're good. A lot of people who know a little bit more about septum piercings, they know that the septum piercing goes through what's called the sweet spot. Now, most people that I see on the internet believe that the sweet spot is a thin piece of skin and I've probably believed that too in the past, that it's kind of more similar to like your lobes. It's really thin. And no matter what it is, it's a really thin piece of tissue. But it actually is cartilage. So your septum piercing is actually going through cartilage. But the cartilage that it's going through is actually more of a consistency to your nostrils. Like if you see your nostrils are really floppy and soft. But then if you go right to the middle of your septum, and try to wiggle it like you can with your nostrils, it's hard, it's more firm. If you're trying to get a piercing through that really thick and hard immobile cartilage, it's gonna hurt a lot. What piercers should be aiming for is what's called the alar cartilage. This sweet spot is just a thin piece of cartilage, kind of similar to your nostrils. I don't know for sure, but I believe it's a little bit thinner than your nostrils perhaps. Your septum piercing should be going through the thin piece of cartilage up and at the tip of your nose. Your septum piercing shouldn't be coming down at the middle of your nose. It should be right at the tip, right at like the front of your nostrils. Now, there are a few exceptions to this rule. It's not hard and fast. Is that a phrase? To start off, you might not have a sweet spot. And if you don't have a sweet spot, but you still want a septum piercing, you are still allowed to get a septum piercing. Hopefully your piercer discusses with you. If they're a good piercer, they will. They'll say, you don't really have a sweet spot, so these are our options. Or they'll say, your sweet spot is very small, so it's gonna make this a little bit trickier. There's a wide range of things that are possible in this situation, but basically, if you don't have a sweet spot, you still can get a septum piercing, but instead of that, nice, what is it, like three to six month heal for a septum piercing with that thinner tissue, it's gonna be a lot longer of a heal if it has to go through thick cartilage. Think more of like hard ear cartilage. Hard cartilage takes, hard cartilage is gonna take at least like nine to 12 months, I would say, but you can get it. Another reason you might get a piercing through the hard cartilage in your nose besides going to a bad piercer and getting a botched job type of thing. Perhaps you already have a septum piercing. If you want a second one, say you want multiple rings but you don't like the cluster of rings like I have here, you can actually get a second septum piercing further back. 
Now, it probably depends on the size of your sweet spot, but I would imagine if it's pretty large, you could probably get a second septum piercing in the sweet spot. Now, that would be more ideal if you planned ahead with your piercer and said, hey, I'm looking to do this, then perhaps they would be able to pierce the first one a little bit further forward and the second one a little bit further back instead of directly through the center of the sweet spot, which could potentially get in the way of a second septum piercing. But if there is no room in the sweet spot, like I'm talking about, you can get another septum piercing back farther in the hard cartilage. It's just gonna be a tougher heel and just a lot more painful. That's, that's point blank period. And yes, you are allowed to get piercings through the hard cartilage. If you've ever heard, there's something called a nasal, nasal laying piercing, which goes straight through the walls of your nostrils, like the outside of your nose, and it goes straight through the middle of the hard part in your septum, you can get a piercing that's meant to go straight through the hard cartilage. So while it's not ideal for you to get a piercing in the hard cartilage of your nose, if that's the way you want it to go, you absolutely can. And hey, if you got a septum piercing and it's in the hard cartilage and you're just realizing this now, you have a few options. You can keep it if you like it. If you like the way it looks, that's fine. Just know that's not necessarily the proper way for it to be done unless your piercer told you you didn't have a sweet spot. Or you can keep that one that's farther back and get one that's in your actual sweet spot and you can still have two septum piercings. I'm all about more as marriers. So if I were you, I would definitely go with that route just to keep the piercing, especially if that one in the hard cartilage is already fully healed. If not, but that probably sucks and it probably hurts and it's probably taking forever to heal. I probably couldn't stick it out. I would have to remove it. <laughs> but it's definitely a personal decision. If you have a piercing, even if it's pierced wrong, it's your call if you wanna take it out or not. Those are your options when it comes to getting pierced in your septum. Now, to find your sweet spot, to find that mystical alar cartilage, that soft cartilage in the very tip of your nose. Now, you might think, hey, that's a pretty easy task. I can just stick my fingers right up in there and feel around. So what you're gonna wanna do to see if you have a sweet spot see if it's big, if you have one at all, whatever the heck you want to know about it for, this is how you do it. Stick your fingers up your nose and then push them towards the tip of your nose. We're not staying back here. That's all hard stuff. Even if it moves around, that's all like your skin on top of hard cartilage. You want to go all the way to the tip, all the way up in there. Get comfortable up there. If you're getting a septum piercing, your piercer is going to have their fingers all up in your nose. So you might as well be comfortable with your own nose. So you want to feel around, feel that soft skin. Now for me personally, it was hard when I didn't have this. For me personally, it was kind of hard to feel if there was a sweet spot because obviously I'm just feeling my finger on the other side and it's the same firmness. So I couldn't really tell. So a very easy way to tell, I'm not sure if a Q-tip would work if you took the like cotton off the end. A toothpick would work, just make sure it's not too sharp. Anything kind of long and pointy but not like sharp pointy, just skinny. I'm personally gonna use this bobby pin that one of the rubber things came off. I'm never gonna put it in my hair again because it's very uncomfortable when the metal just scratches at your hair and your scalp. What you're gonna wanna do is put one finger all the way in the tip of your nose, just like you were doing to meet both fingers. But instead of putting your other finger in the other side, you're gonna wanna put the tip of this bobby pin right where your finger was when you were feeling the very tip of your nose. So you're going to want to kind of go forward because a lot of people have some nostril skin right here. Some people goes pretty far back. So put your finger in towards the tip and then you're going to want to angle the pointy thing towards the tip as well. Obviously this wouldn't work for a needle. You'd be scratching all up inside your nose. So you just want to, so you just want to put this in the tip and then just poke and then you'll feel whatever pointy implement you'll feel it against your finger and if you want to try to see if it feels different on the hard cartilage you can and you won't be able to feel I guess you can kind of feel like it firmly moving as one but if you're in the tip of your nose in the sweet spot you'll be able to feel the tissue kind of bending like you'll be able to feel that point touching your finger on the other side. And basically, if you can feel that, 
very easily that's your sweet spot and if it was easy for you to find it you probably have a pretty large sweet spot now if you had to poke around a little bit more perhaps your sweet spot is a little bit smaller I'm not exactly sure about all the anatomy things. Although I was just editing and looking back, I feel like I didn't explain myself that amazingly and I just wanted to say that if you try this at home, you might have a little bit of a different experience. While I had to go up to the front since I have like a pretty big flap of skin here, uh, some people's nostrils are higher up. So it might be a little bit easier for you to find your sweet spot by just like poking like this. You wouldn't have to necessarily move your whole like front of your nose up like I had to like go forward and then in you might just be able to go straight in to feel it so everyone's nose is different take it with a grain of salt get a good piercer and you won't even have to worry about it <laughs> and to be fair I'm not a piercer definitely go to a piercer to get your piercings please don't use this as a guide to find your sweet spot to pierce yourself at home because it takes more than just knowing where your sweet spot is to get a straight septum piercing. I've seen many, like even some popular YouTubers, like popular like piercing type of YouTubers. Uh, I don't want to name names, but like, oh, I watched this one girl, she pierced her septum at home, then she messed up completely and it was crooked. And then you can comment down below if you know what I'm talking about. It was a recent video like a month ago or something then she redid it and she's like oh it's better now and it was crooked the other direction it was still crooked and she's pierced her septum before so no knowledge no at-home knowledge is gonna get you a perfect piercing ever if you don't know all the risks if you don't feel confident in piercing yourself at home just go to a professional you'll save money you won't have to buy the piercing kit you won't have to pay for crappy jewelry, you won't have to pay to upgrade the jewelry, you won't have to pay a fee when you have to go back to the piercer and ask them what you did wrong, you won't have to pay the fee of the ER or urgent care that you had to go to for the infection. So please, don't pierce yourself at home. Just do this, see, do you have a sweet spot? If you're wondering, I know before I got my septum pierced, I was definitely wondering if I had a sweet spot. And um, it turns out I really do have a sweet spot and I hope you enjoyed me sticking a bobby pin in my nose and watching me with my mustache in my nose and thank you so much for watching I hope I didn't come off too aggressive in this video <laughs> let me know down below what you want to see next don't forget to like share and subscribe hit that bell and I love you see you in the next one bye Okay, I gotta get this out. Ow! Too much going on. This is always so tricky. I'm not even using a mirror. I don't know how people would do this with a regular septum. Mmm. Mmm. Nose dust.